legacy I don't care if they remember me Only Jesus Good morning And there we go, thank you Yeah, it's good to be here with you this morning Welcome, there's coffee and ice water in the back Feel free to help yourselves and it's okay if we bring that on in also, good morning if you're worshiping with us through the stream or on YouTube this morning. It's good to be with you. Let's see, for announcements we have, if you could remember to fill out those red pew pads with a name and some kind of contact information, we'd love to follow up with you, especially if you're visiting with us. And also, if you're a Facebooker, you can check in on Facebook and just check in. I, I don't know how it's done. Click here, I think, and then it just automatically creates a, a contact with, with us and between us and you, and we can follow up with you that way. So. Yeah, all kinds of stuff happening. We have just a couple weeks left in the Lenten um, series, services on Wednesday. Those are meeting at noon and uh, with, a, with a dinner at 1230. And over at 1, you can be back to work if you have an hour for lunch. Um, those, that's Wednesdays. And we're going to have a, let's see here, we'll have an Ash Wednesday service coming up in just a few weeks. So be looking for that. Not Ash Wednesday, um, yeah, Good Friday service, I'm sorry. Ash Wednesday was a few weeks ago. We're into the series now. Good Friday service, that's what I'm going with. Any other announcements this morning as we get started? Forget anything? All right, let's pray. God, it is good to be here with you this morning, with your people. God, we're asking that you move amongst us. We know that, that you show up when we meet together. God, and we're depending on you this morning. God, to continue this relationship that you've started with us, God, that you've drawn us close to you. And oh, what joy it is to know you. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to stand with me if you're able.
seated. We invite the youngsters to come forward at this time.
Well, good morning, everybody. I want to know if you recognize, by the way, does it feel like spring to you today? No, no I know. No. Okay, let's just grumble a little bit. When you grumble, what do you, what do, you do? Do you growl? Do you look depressed? A little bit of everything. All right, here's a question I have for you. What kind of a bag is this? Garbage bag. That's pretty recognizable. What do we use garbage bags for? Garbage. Garbage. That's a good question. To take out the trash, right? Whatever the garbage is, we want to take out. So I, I just I brought some trash. I thought maybe we'd just look into this. Now we know that sometimes some trash is, is worth something. Gotta dig deep here. Uh, but here's here's some trash. Uh, this is a glass bottle. What what do we do with that? There's nothing in it, by the way, so don't get excited here, okay? What do we do with the glass bottle? You put it in the recyclables. You put it in recyclables. So some trash, it's not that we throw away, but we put someplace where, where, it, can be, uh, where it can be gotten again, right? Well, let's see if I can't find some more trash down here. It can be renewed. can be renewed? Reused. Reused, used in a different way, right? What about this? Plastic. That can be reused. Do, do we recycle this? We do. Some things we don't recycle, but, but we recycle plastic as well. And if I get a few more things out of here, I won't have any recycling to do at my house this week. This is good. And uh, so, so you get the idea. We take things that we no longer need, and we turn them into something that's useful, usable, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring you some more trash here and see what you think this is. What's this? A wheel. Uh, I heard a little bit of everything. A wheel, a windmill. I think I heard everything here. It's a clock. That's for riding your bike. It is for riding your bike. You're absolutely correct. I think this really was a uh, for riding bike one time. And uh, someone who's pretty clever, they cut off the spokes back here and then they welded the spokes a little bit so they'd stay. And they put a clock mechanism in the center. So this now hangs in my living room. And I really love it. But it's made out of trash. <laughs> Very good. So. So if you get this concept here, I should turn this around so, so out there you can see the, the numbers the right way. But uh, it's hard to picture, it's hard to see these here. But you can see the batteries, so they put a clock mechanism in here. And this is really one of my favorite possessions, and yet I always laugh. It's just like me to like things that are made out of trash, you know? And that's called repurposing or making new. The, the biblical story that we're dealing with today is the, is the loving father or the lost son, depends on how, what you're used to calling it. But it's the one where, the, uh, where, where a man had two sons, and his youngest son said, please give me what I'm going to inherit someday, basically when you die, is what he was saying. And I'd like to have my, my inheritance now, my treasure now. How many of you thought of saying that to your parents a few times, right? I'd like my treasure now. So... Um, the, the father divided things up. One son was staying with him, but the other son, the younger son, was going away. He took all his treasure, and he lived in a way that wasn't very, he lived in a way that wasn't very, very smart. He squandered all his money, all his treasure, and then famine came, and, and then by that, there was no food, and he was hungry as can be. And after he was almost working with the pigs, and he used to have a place of position with the father, but now he's, he's literally living in the midst of the trash, so to speak. So he says, I'm going to go home to my dad. So he goes back home to his dad, and, and he's all ready to tell him, I don't deserve any of the th good things that you want to do for me, uh, father, but, but uh, I'm willing to just work as a servant in your household, not even to be a son. And the father welcomes him with open arms and, uh, and has a big party and celebrates the fact that his son who was lost has now been found. And what I would like to remind you today is that is it just like, just like glass and plastic can be turned into something valuable in our society, so people who are lost and don't know God can become very valuable to the kingdom of God if we just allow Jesus to, to care for us. And the image we have of God is someone who welcomes you and me back into his life. If you get what I'm saying, nod your head. Good job. Turning trash into treasure and that's what he's doing with your life, and that's what he's doing with my life. Let's pray together. Oh, Lord, thank you so much um, for your wisdom, 
for the fact that you are like that father and your arms are open. You're just waiting for us to come back to you, to desire to live for you. So I ask, Lord, that you bless each one of my young friends. Sometimes they will see trash in each other, but you will show them that they each are a treasure, both to you and to one another. Bless my young friends. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Jerome's going to help you as we get ready to take up the penny collection. Um, this is the Sunday in which all kinds of offerings are being taken up for UMCOR, United Methodist Committee on Relief. Oh, no, that's, that's, that's my trash. Thank you. Good request. I should have never called my clock trash. I got a We don't have to come to God out. like somebody else. No. We come to him like we are. And a lot of times that means that I start my prayer time with God, just show me my heart. Show me where I am. God, show me truth about myself so I know how to follow you. Sing this prayer with us. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. Sing that again. Here's my heart. Here's my heart, Lord. Can you pray that to him? Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak truth, Lord. Speak what is true. I am found. I am yours. I am loved. I'm made pure. I have life. I can breathe. I am here. God to search your heart. Lord, open us up. Speak to us. Draw us closer to you, Father. Let's sing this prayer to him. You are more than enough. Can you sing that?
God, we love you. And we thank you for your amazing, amazing, amazing patience with us. I can't imagine what it's like to watch us down here chasing our tails, scratching all our itches, thinking that we found answers. We're digging holes in the ground, calling them wells, and just starving little people. God, if we would ever open up our heart to you, trust you, you do something only you can do. Can we sing that chorus one more time? Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. Let's pray. Speak what is true. God, we take these few moments during this time of worship to engage in another act of worship of giving. And God, we ask that you would bless these gifts, these offerings, these tithes to be a blessing to you, God, in, in bringing people into your kingdom, into your house, into your family, God, so that they too may know the joy of a relationship with you. Amen. I want to be praying for um, Gordy around the stop this morning and ask that we be praying for him. He's in Hammett. I guess he had a heart event last night, and so they took him to Hammett. So they're going to do a, a heart catheterization tomorrow and see what's going on, but... Uh, be praying for him and their family. Any others? Yeah. Good morning, Sean. This is uh, day 16 of uh, dealing with a partial facial paralysis. Um, I could complain, but I'm not going to because the last couple days, if I concentrate really hard, I can twitch my left eye. So... Um, I want to thank God for that, but I also wanted to thank you for your prayers because I know that a lot of you are praying really hard for me, and uh, I need it. <laughs> so thank you very much. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, Sean. Any others? <clears throat> Our son Michael is home, and I uh, just pre really appreciate he came home, and uh, we, have, we, we were able to spend time with uh, Michael and his girlfriend, Andrea, and it's just great to see him. So. Any others? We got word yesterday, uh, just before I was heading up to Erie to the hospital, that, that Debbie Reed was on her way back down to Titusville. Um, I believe that she might be, I think it's at the hospital that she came to, the, the extended care or whatever that floor is, you know, whatever that, that, however that works. So Debbie Reed, I think, is back in town. Uh, we'll keep checking on that to make sure. Also, in the 11 o'clock service, Bev Tenney worships on a regular basis. And uh, Bev is one of the ones that living with, with one kidney uh, for a long time. And the word has just uh, uh, recently with, from the hospital just earlier this week, I think Monday or Tuesday, that uh, that kidney is no longer working. And I don't think she's opting for dial dialysis. So uh, I believe that, that um, she's really trying to prepare uh, for end of life issues. And the hospice is already working with them. But her name is Bev Tenney. She's just a great lady. And uh, uh, we'd be praying for her as well. All right. Thank you. Let's pray. Holy God, first thing that we want to say is thank you. God, thank you for this progress that is um, being made with uh, the nerves in Sean's face. God, we thank you for this body of believers that have prayed for him. And God, that just the answer to prayer that we've already seen, ask to continue to, to heal these nerves in his face. Also, God, we thank you for Michael and that he's able to be home with us. And girlfriend Andrea, God, and I just ask that you would um, continue to bless him, bless them, and uh, just think back of all the years that I've had the pleasure of doing ministry with Michael, God, and the joy that he's brought to my life and our life, God, and, and I'm sure um, Joe and Elise's life. 
God, thank you. Pray for traveling mercies, safety as they travel. God, we're asking you to touch Debbie Reed at this time. Also for Bev, as she is just at this point in, in life that it's hard to imagine, God, but we're, we're headed there ourselves, but she is there. And God, we are asking you to just guide her through this process with peace and comfort. And just, God, the encouragement that you are a very, very much a part of this as well. God, we think of Gordy. Ask that they would be able to just pin down the issue of what's going on with this heart event that he, that he had, God, and we thank you that he's able to get medical attention. Ask you to guide these decisions tomorrow. God, we do love you. We do thank you. We thank you for this relationship that you have brought us into, have given us new life, have reached down while we were sinners, God, before we had any idea that we needed a Savior. God, you started, you began that drawing our hearts towards you. And God, we have already experienced just the goodness and the fulfillment of knowing you. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to this place of worship. I'm reading today out of Luke chapter 15. Remember, there are three stories in Luke 15 about uh, that which was lost and how it's found and God's all out pursuit in order to find you and me and everyone else who is lost. Pick up in Luke 15, verse 11. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all that he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth and, and wild living. While he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and, and hired himself out to citizen of that country, who sent him to the field to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. And when he came to his senses, he said, how many of the father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. Also, or so he got up and, and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Well, as you may have gathered with our time with the children, we're, we're working on being recycled. Trash bags. What all gets put into trash bags? What all is cared for that way? What needs to be thrown away? What could be repurposed? What could be used again in a, in a, in a, in a legitimate way? And today we have two stories that, that, I'm, that I want to be able to tell. One is a contemporary story, 
And one is the ancient story that we just read in the passage of scripture. But this begin with a, a more contemporary story. I, I, um, I want to clue you into uh, the story of, of Billy Keese. And you pronounce it Billy Keese. She's Nigerian. Uh, and um, she's really from the, uh, from the city of Lagos, Nigeria. And I've got a picture of, uh, of, of Lagos here. Oh, no, I guess it's, uh, yeah, if we just take a look at that picture right there. Um, and you'll see that, that it's a beautifully modern city. It's one of the, uh, Nigeria has one of the strongest economies in all of Africa. And this is really on the uh, west coast, uh, right, right there at the edge of it. Lagos is the name of that particular thing. And you can see it uh, very beautifully as, as the map there. And if, I, and if you just leave that up for just a second, that'd be good. Uh, in that process, Billy Keys was had an opportunity to be going to the university in Laos, but to finish it, as many do, she wanted to finish her education in the United States. So she traveled to uh, Vanderbilt in, in uh, Nashville, I believe that's in Nashville, isn't it? And traveled to Vanderbilt and, and got her degree, and then she went to, uh, she actually worked for about five years as a, as a software engineer, uh, made some money, but went now to get her MBA, and she went to MIT to get her MBA. And while she was there, she was looking for a business project that she'd be able to do her, her master's uh, uh, thesis with. And so she began to work and finally settled on something that she thought was really quite practical. She knew that, that, uh, that in her hometown, garbage was a problem. And I want to move on and, and take, a look, take a look at that. Uh, if you can understand what this city is like. Now, when I show you the picture of the modern city, this is just a little ways inland. And in Lagos, there are 21 million people living in that region. You know, there's the city, and then there's the state area, and then, and then it extends out. And so there are 21 million people living in that region, and only 60% of the garbage is picked up. Now, what would that mean in our community? And you can imagine what that means with 21 million people, right? So garbage would just stack up. And you see that uh, this particular place, water is laying down there, and they have uh, raised up platforms in order to walk across and just to be able to get around in the community. That, that probably is the picture of trash that I want to make sure that I'm keeping in front of you here this morning to understand why Billy Kids uh, did what she was doing. So she began to put together, and she noticed when she was in America that the people tend to sort out their trash into bins, and, uh, and because of that, uh, nothing is left laying around, at least ideally not left laying around afterwards. And so she thought if only her people could begin to adopt this. So she put together a bit of a plan that they could collect that. When she went back to Nigeria, she had a hard time talking them into it uh, at first. And um, now I think I'm ready to go back to the picture of the city here. If we could, could take a look at that. Uh, she didn't know, you know, you see the, the traffic in that place uh, and also the beauty of the land uh, of the skyscrapers. But she had a hard time getting people to buy in. They, they couldn't quite grasp, since garbage is garbage, how, how somehow working with garbage was going to improve their lives. So she came up with a, a mercenary idea that works really well. She began to work with individuals to let them know that they could make money by sorting out trash. All right, how many of you, uh, you, you got to be close to my age, but how many of you remember growing up and seeing a, a, a soda pop bottle somewhere around the thing and said, that's two pennies, and, uh, and we'd go get that. And, and I recall if I could get five of those, that would give me a dime. And often I could, uh, I, could buy a, I could buy a bottle of pop to drink myself. Or if I could come up with even less than that, a nickel in those days, in some of the machines I was at would buy a candy bar. Now, not that I was hung up on candy bars or anything, but I, I discovered that that was a pretty good way to do that. And so we learned that those glass bottles were valuable to us, though people would throw them out, but kids all over the place would run around getting them and picking them up in order to redeem them uh, for the... Um, you know, for, for, for money. And she began to work with the, the people like that. So she developed and found about 6,000 people who were willing to search the streets in their neighborhoods, separating both metal and plastic. And then she, she put together a whole bunch of uh, tricycles that had big bins on them with three different spots, with different kinds of things being, um, you know, being recycled. 
and those bicycle, tricycles will go around because when you see that traffic part of them there, what do you think it would be like trying to get a garbage truck around all those streets? So this particular bicycle would stop by to about 6,000 customers. It'd have a hand weight, you know, a hand scale that it would hold. They would put the plastic on there and then he would keep a, a point tabulation for that particular homeowner or that person who was collecting. And then that person could turn that in for household goods. It was like a point system, a little bit like green stamps, if I could say it that way, all right? A uh, point system and they could turn it in for things like that or even possibly get cash. And I want you to know that that totally transformed things. People weren't so much worried about the environment as they were about the fact was here was a way to do that. Now they also noticed it was good for their environment as they, as they worked this process out. So, so the good news is, um, and I believe I saw that, that the, the trash that's in, uh, that's in Lagos is worth about $300 million a year for the outfits that, that, you know, that recycle. I think they use the plastic for mattress filling and things like that. So uh, pretty special and, uh, and it worked beautifully. Now that's one story as she was able to help people turn their trash into treasure. Now the other story that we're dealing is one that we just read from the Gospel of Luke. And this story is more of a man with treasure who turned it into trash, which is what we do with our lives, I think, all the time. I already shared with the children, i share with you, but just say it one more time. There was a father who had two sons. And um, the younger of the son just felt like he could never possibly wait for his inheritance to come in. And so he asked his father for his inheritance now. And how many times have we heard that? I'd, you know, I want to live for now. What good is all this stuff whenever I'm older? Or maybe not even living later on. So his dad began to separate things and made it so that his portion could go with him, and he did. He spent it in riotous living. I always like uh, some of the, one of the great euphemisms in all the scriptures where Jesus talks about he wasted it all in extravagant living. That's a euphemism for, and he blew it in junk and cruddy things and a cruddy lifestyle, and it was gone. And then whenever famine took place and whenever he was hungry, he began to look at his lot and he began to feel like he was trash. Uh, he couldn't even, you know, he started working, hired out, working with the pigs, which, which you know, would just be offensive to, to, a Jewish, uh, to a Jewish person. And he worked with the pigs and he was feeding them and he even longed for the food that the pigs had. Uh, and he said, I'm, I'm going home. He came up with a plan, just like Billy Keys had uh, for taking him back to Nigeria. He came up with a plan and that was to go back to his father. He certainly knew that he did not deserve to be welcomed as a son, but, uh, but if he could even get hired on as a servant, he knew his servants were living way better than what he was. And so he goes back. And of course, the, 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 the beauty of the story that Jesus tells is that the father not only is waiting with open arms, but that he hikes up his robes and he runs out to meet the son that he sees coming. Now, let me just make a quick comment. He doesn't, uh, the father doesn't, in this particular story, and it's just it's a parable that Jesus tells, so you've got to be careful not putting a one-to-one -one correspondence with every symbolic thing you see. But it is note to note that, that the father doesn't send people to go bring the son back. Uh, he just was open to the son whenever the son was ready to come back. You understand the difference there? I, uh, I heard of an outfit uh, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and I'm just picturing as God the recycler here at the moment, but heard of an outfit called, called Global Rescue. Uh, Global Rescue is a company, I believe, that's centered in Prague, and they specialize in going in and getting people out of difficult situations, particularly political turmoil, uh, war, flooding, natural disaster. Uh, I'm sure it's very expensive, but they specialize in it. Way back in 2011, when Arab Spring was just breaking out, uh, in Egypt, uh, and, uh, and there was a college in Vermont in which some students were there, uh, you know, studying abroad, and they had done all the insurances and worked with an insurance company that, that would care for an emergency if it come to happen, but that company left the, uh, uh, you know, dropped the ball in this whole process, and so they had to find another way uh, to get home, and so they called Global Rescue, who within two hours had someone on the ground uh, beginning to work out arrangements, and then just a few hours later, had a plane come in in order to take those students back out. Global rescue. Just please note that God does not always send the rescuer in to pick up you and me. For some reason, he'll allow us to actually be 
a little bit uncomfortable or miserable in our situation. How many of you know what I'm talking about? How many of you prayed about something that God has not yet cleaned up for you yet? You know, doesn't mean he's not going to, does it? But, but he somehow lets us wrestle with a lot of things. Um, and we sometimes, we sometimes treat God like, like if I just get him with a cell phone and say, God, come in and do something. Uh, it's kind of what we want people to do many times. We somehow want God to do that. And God is somewhat willing to let us struggle with whatever we're struggling with. Uh, but, but he does wait for you and me to turn and to come toward him. And when the son comes towards the father, the father runs out and embraces him, kills the fatted calf, puts sandals on his feet, best robe upon him, and he, and he treats him. And the father wasn't going to let him wallow in his guilt. Father doesn't let him struggle with the fact he doesn't deserve the love his dad is giving. That's the kind of stuff I do, you know. But the father doesn't let him do that. He just welcomes him back, and it's a beautiful thing. Now, I don't have to tell you the other half of the story, which is really preachable. I just don't know if I have time to do it all the time. But the other part of that story is the older son, who never did leave his father, was obedient, was dependable. Um, he didn't like the idea that the younger son was welcomed back in. And all you have to do is picture your own family. Think of a brother or sister, a wayward brother or sister. Don't say the name out loud, but someone that your parents have treated and gone the extra mile with, you know? And that's what's going on with the older son. He knows that this guy doesn't belong to it. But what the older son is forgetting is that the father loves him just the same. Think about this now. The father loves him just the same as the one who has turned everything into trash in his life. And so the father explains it. We're going to celebrate my son who was lost. Now he's found. He says, but, but you, everything I have is still yours. Everything that's coming to you is still, still coming to you. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, you're not lost. But he was in danger of becoming lost, wasn't he? The mere fact that, that he could not follow his father's example of how he recycled and how he repurposes the very people that he's looking after. Um, I look at the, there's a few passages in Psalms that I'm thinking about uh, that, that seem to work in this particular area. One is we're used to thinking that God should just be at the end of our, our cell phone doing what we want him to do. We get that from Psalm 46. Uh, it sounds like it. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. So if we're not careful, we just use a kind of send a wish list toward God. But you've got to read some of the other passages in Psalms. Well, Psalm 10. Uh, why, Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? Or Psalm 44. Awake, Lord. Why do you, why do you sleep? Rouse yourself. Do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face and forget your misery and oppression? And just a reminder to you whenever you feel like trash or you've rebelled against God or you've blown treasure in your life and turned it into trash. What you need to remember in that process is, is that it's a matter of turning towards God. That's where the word repentance comes, right? Turn towards God and moving towards him. Now, I'm not getting into the heavy theology thing. How much does God draw us and how much is our decision? There's a balance there somehow, uh, and I don't know for sure exactly where it is, but no matter what's going on in your life, if your life is turned to trash in any shape or form, it is a matter, it's still possible to turn and run towards your loving Father, one who welcomes you back. A whole lot of us in the church wouldn't welcome you back sometimes. I know the way this works. I've pastored them as well. Um, sometimes that tendency is to not even want to come close to welcoming them back. But I believe that you and I are called to recycle. In every opportunity we have to, uh, to take that which is turned into trash and to repurpose it. That's what's going on here. If, if we took the time for everyone to tell their stories this morning, there'd be, un, there'd be amazing stories about what was going on in your life before you turned towards God and ran back into him. I often joke, you know, about trying to point out to people what their problems are. But, but we are a collection of people who have allowed our treasure, we are treasures to God, to be turned into trash from time to time. And God is just waiting for you and me to turn toward him. 
And as we turn toward them, and he's been drawing us, you probably wouldn't be able to turn unless the spirit draws you to him in the first place. But I've also known a lot of people that I think the spirit is drawing them and they just flat out won't turn. And then it's a matter of their will. And I don't have to understand all this in the great theological circles to know that, that uh, all this takes place in God's world. But the image that I want you to see this day is a God who wants to turn your life into an amazing victory and how he wants to repurpose you. And when he recycles you, you're going to determine if you want to be more like the younger brother or the older brother. And when you're in this particular place, if you decide to be hard on someone who's trying to come to God in, in this way, uh, then, then you run the very risk of what the father was trying to teach his older son in that very process. I wanted to try something today that, that's a little bit different. Um, I'm going to ask the worship team to please come back up. And, but while they're coming up, uh, I, had, uh, I had emailed to skip last minute today, by the way. Don't, don't volunteer for that ministry up there unless you want your life to be turned around in many ways. Skip handles it well. Uh, I've given him slides today and I've jumped everything around and he's had to find everything. But one of the things I saw just this morning while I'm working on this was a piece that was put out by CBS. Uh, a, CBS put this out, I think, uh, in the year 2016, and it was a trailer for one of the uh, pieces they were doing in one of their magazine formats. And it was about uh, the, a trash dump that's in Paraguay. Now, we've moved from Africa to South America now, okay? Not to confuse you. But a trash dump that's in Paraguay, and, uh, and people just live there. It's not an organized recycling thing, but all kinds of people live and play, and kids play in the trash dump, and when they see something valuable, they use it or they put it in their homes, and uh, so you can imagine a lot of the disease. But in this particular place, someone had the idea of turning trash items that they see into musical instruments. And so here in this poorest of poor area, and Paraguay is a poor country, but in the poorest of the poor area, they were able to put together an orchestra with instruments made out of metal, plastic, strings. And, uh, and I want you to just see this modern day parable for what God does for you and me. Entonces tienen que atender. kids in Paraguay actually made all of the instruments out of trash. Look at this. That's a fork, people. That gift of music shine through tonight on that stage. piece is called Landfill Harmonic, uh, and you can find things on that, and, and, and there's lots of, or, else, or just put Paraguay Dump, and you'll, and you'll find uh, some 13-minute videos on that, and uh, I was uh, trying to remember to pray this morning while I was watching all those videos put that. People saw a landfill, trash, but one person saw the treasure, 
The world we live in sometimes feels like a trash dump. But God sees the treasure. You and I are given the privilege, like the older son, of participating in seeing men and women come back to him. If you need more motive than that, then uh, I don't think I can help you, okay? Uh, let's see what God will do. Uh, how will you and I welcome those that we get to run into out in the community, in our families? Um, let's pray together. Lord, there's a lot of recycling that needs to take place in our lives as well as the lives of others. Help us to hunger, to seek, and find the lost, knowing that you have the answer. But Lord, we would like to partner with you in this principle that is so biblical and so much you. Make us usable, Lord, that we would be used. Amen. you stand with us once again if you're able when the music fades all is stripped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's a word That'll bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search much deeper About 30 years ago, I used to keep a picture on my desk, and I used to share it with the congregation all the time. And the picture was just a, a picture of a kid, a grumpy-looking kid on the front of the T-shirt, and it says, God don't make no junk. Um, not great grandma, but the point was pretty, pretty clear. You're not trash. In the eyes of God, you are treasure. Repurpose to live for him.
Go in peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.